Hello, this is Lazarus at Telecom Tech, where telecom and networking technologies are simply explained. Today, we'll be explaining the difference between eBGP and IBGP. Border Gateway Protocol, or BGP, is the routing protocol that is used on the internet at large. But when we talk about BGP, we often refer to internal BGP and external BGP. These are abbreviated as IBGP and eBGP. So what's the difference between these two and why do they actually exist? Well, sometimes it's also as if they are approached as two different routing protocols, but this is not the case. These are simply two different manifestations of the same protocol. They operate slightly differently, but it's the same protocol. Now to understand eBGP and IBGP, first let's take a brief look at the structure of the internet. BGP subdivides the internet into what are called autonomous systems or ASs. Each AS is assigned a particular number and it's considered an independent entity that is controlled and administered by a particular organization such as an ISP or a large enterprise. Each AS contains tens, hundreds and sometimes even thousands of BGP routers. Now we come to the essence of our question. eBGP simply put is used when we create a BGP peering between two routers that belong to different ASs. Conversely, IBGP is used when we create a BGP peering between two routers that belong to the same AS. Now in our diagram here, our IBGP peering would be that which takes place between R1 and R3, while our eBGP peering is that which takes place between R1 and R2. If we were to examine the configuration of these routers, assuming they're Cisco devices, we would see something similar to the following. Notice that the local AS indicated by the router BGP command and the remote AS indicated by the neighbor command are different. And this is the case within each router. This means that the peering is an eBGP peering. Similarly, let's take a look at the BGP configuration of R1 and R3. If we were to do this, we'd see something like this. Notice in this case that the local AS indicated by the router BGP command, as well as the remote AS indicated by the neighbor command are the same. This is thus an IBGP peering. And we see this in the configuration of both routers. So roughly speaking, that simply means that an IBGP peering is defined as a peering between routers in the same AS, and an eBGP peering is defined as a peering between routers in different ASs. But that doesn't mean that we're using a different protocol in each case. We're still using the same protocol, but it simply behaves differently, depending on what kind of peering arrangement we have. Now, the reason why we make a distinction between these two peering types is because BGP is designed to operate differently in each situation. If a prefix is learned from a BGP peer in a different AS, that is via eBGP, that prefix must be handled in a particular way as far as how it's propagated and evaluated. Similarly, if a prefix is learned from a BGP peer in the same AS via iBGP, that prefix must be handled in a different way. So this is how BGP works, and it's just one of the reasons why it's so scalable and thus ideal for the internet. So how are these peerings different? Well, first of all, there are different rules governing how they should be implemented. For example, iBGP requires that all iBGP routers within an AS have a full mesh BGP peering arrangement. That means that each iBGP speaker within an AS must have created a BGP peering with every other IBGP speaker in that AS. Now, eBGP has no such requirement. Similarly, eBGP by default needs to have its peers directly connected. Although you can change this behavior, it's typically best practice to adhere to this rule. iBGP routers, on the other hand, can create peerings that are several hops away as long as routing is made available between them via an IGP or static routing configuration. 
There's also a difference in the way routes learned via each type of BGP are handled. A route that is learned via external BGP is defined as a route that does not belong to the local AS. Similarly, if a prefix is learned by a BGP router from within its own AS, then this is considered an IBGP route. So how are these two types of routes handled differently? Well, for one thing, the administrative distance is different. The AD is a value used by routers to select the best path when there are multiple routes to the same destination learned from different routing protocols. AD is an indication of the trustworthiness of a source of routing information. The lower the AD value, the more trustworthy the source of the route is considered. So any route that is learned via eBGP is given a default administrative distance of 20, while any route that is learned via IBGP is given a default administrative distance of 200. Another difference between eBGP and IBGP is the way the next hop is handled. The next hop is the IP address to which the packet should be sent, and this is an attribute that is included in BGP updates. By default, when advertising to an eBGP peer, the next hop attribute is changed to the IP address of the interface used to reach that eBGP peer. For IBGP, the next hop attribute remains the same. So looking at this diagram here, we see that if R2 were to advertise the 30.30.30.0 slash 24 network to R1, the BGP update that R1 receives will have a next hop IP address of R2. When R1, however, using IBGP, forwards that update to R3, the next hop remains that of R1. So eBGP changes the next hop while IBGP allows the next hop to remain the same. And finally, another difference is the way that the AS path is handled. Now, the AS path is simply a list of ASs that must be traversed in order to reach the destination network. When advertising routes to eBGP peers, the local AS number is prepended to the AS path. However, the AS path attribute remains unchanged when advertising to IBGP peers. So again, if R2 advertises to R1, the 30.30.30.0 slash 24 network, it'll prepend AS190 to that AS path. However, when R1 forwards that update to R3, the AS path will remain unchanged. Now, the point here is to indicate the fundamental differences between these two manifestations of BGP. Now, there are very good reasons for these differences, reasons which we won't go into now, but they have to do with the hierarchical structure of the internet and the way that BGP serves this structure. Simply put, IBGP is responsible for dealing with exchanging and advertising BGP routes within an AS, while eBGP is responsible for sharing BGP routes between ASs. Now, before we end off, let me just add one more piece of information here. A prerequisite to the use of BGP is the fact that routing within an AS must be fully established before IBGP can be configured. Now, this is typically achieved using an interior gateway protocol or IGP, such as OSPF or EIGRP. Now, this can be confusing and students often ask, why do I need an IGP if we've already deployed BGP? Isn't BGP a routing protocol that can achieve what we need? Well, we'll address this question in another video, but for now, it's enough to know that this is a prerequisite. So in summary, eBGP and IBGP are the same protocol, but they just differ based on the type of peering that is established. eBGP involves peerings between BGP routers in different ASs, while IBGP involves peerings between BGP routers in the same AS. And eBGP and IBGP differ in the way that they are to be implemented and in the rules that they follow. And finally, they also differ in the way that they behave. That is, the way that particular routes are learned and how those routes are handled. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like me to address other related topics, please feel free to let me know in the comments. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button and please subscribe 
to get updates to newly published videos. I'm Lazarus at Telecom Tech. I hope this has been helpful for you and I'd like to thank you for watching.